Hi, this is my first video about a project I've been working on for about the past year or so on and off uh, called the Amethyst. It's a retro styled 8-bit home computer based on the AT Mega 1284 microcontroller. Features a whopping 16 kilobytes of RAM and a clock speed of about 14.3 megahertz. Uh, as you can see, it's got a mechanical keyboard. This is uh, what's typically referred to as a 40% layout. It's got 47 keys. Uh, typing on it is not too bad. The one major thing you have to get used to is that there's no space bar. So you, this is the space key. If we turn it around to the back, we can get a look at the connections. So over here on the left, we have composite video out. Uh, color composite video out, actually, as you'll see, uh, mono audio out, USB for 5 volt power and serial communication with a PC. The uh, AVR chip inside is programmed with the OptiBoot bootloader, uh, basically Arduino compatible. You don't need um, you don't need an AVR ISP programming device to upload new code. To the amethyst. Uh, you can use one if you have one. Um, we've got an analog port here. Provides uh, two analog channels uh, that could be used for, say, an analog joystick or a pair of paddles. And then we have four SPI serial ports. Two on the back here and two on the side here. Uh, these are intended to be used for uh, game controllers. And finally, we have the power indicator, which is purple because amethyst, and reset button. And if I scoot it out of the way, we can take a look at what's under the hood. Here's my first prototype unit. I've taken the top piece off so you can see inside. And you can also get an idea of why I called this the amethyst, because it's a purple PCB from... Osh Park. Uh, the circuit is not very complicated. Uh, it could be built on a breadboard. Um, we have the main processor, the AT Mega 1284. Uh, we've got the FT230X USB to serial converter. And then we have um, four 7400 series logic chips to assist in the video generation. Two of them are uh, multiplexers and two of them are shift registers. Um, the video is generated entirely in software and supports uh, not only black and white video, but also um, 16 color and 256 color modes. Uh, color is generated using NTS NTSC artifacting, which is the same uh, technique used by the Apple II giving it a maximum color resolution of 160 by 200 or a monochrome resolution of 640 by 200. And I'll get into the details of uh, the video signal generation in a future part of this series. So now uh, let's turn it on and take a look at some of the software that I've written. So when you first power up the amethyst, you are presented with the launcher. Here you see a list of all the programs in ROM and to launch a program, you just press the appropriate letter on the keyboard. So let's start off by running the color test, and I will press A. So this is the color test. It shows various test patterns, and I can press different keys to uh, call up different patterns. Um, so here we see various shades of gray. This is a stair-step pattern that's very helpful, uh, especially when using an oscilloscope to calibrate the two trim pots that control the video signal's amplitude. Here are a couple more grayscale tests, and here are the colors. If you're a retro computer enthusiast, uh, this palette might look familiar to you. These are the same colors used by the Apple II's lower res graphics mode and the little used uh, composite output on the IBM CGA card. Uh, because Amethyst is generating color using NTSC artifacts. The two gray shades that you see in the middle are actually the same, uh, visually indistinguishable from one another. So technically, you get 15 colors and not 16. Um, 
Artifact color, uh, I'll get into the details in a future video, but basically um, the amethyst is really only generating a one bit uh, video output. So just, you know, zero and one, no digital to analog converter. Um, and basically the filtering circuitry inside your TV causes that one bit digital signal to be interpreted as both uh, luminance and chrominance data. Um, I don't know if Steve Wozniak was the first to discover this phenomenon and implement it in the Apple II. Um, let me know in the comments if you know where this technique originated. I don't recall reading about it in the uh, TV typewriter cookbook from the mid-70s. Um, again, let me know if you know who the first person to quote-unquote discover artifact color was. Uh, finally, we have the 256 color test. So in 256 color mode, uh, there are two shift registers ganged together with a simple uh, resistive DAC, basically giving you a two-bit output. So every color you see on the screen is a weighted combination of two colors from the 16 color palette. And technically, since there are only 15 distinct colors in the 16 color palette, this mode only gives you 225 distinct colors, 15 times 15. So uh, I, I apologize for the false advertising. Next up is the text mode test. As with the color test, I can press different keys to display uh, different patterns uh, that exercise both the 40 column and 80 column text modes. Here, I'm testing the 40 by 25 text mode. As you can see, the character set uh, includes box drawing and semi-graphics characters in the upper 32 code points. I've named this character set Amski uh, in honor of, say, Commodore's Petski and Atari's AT ASCII. Um, the upper 128 glyphs are just the lower 128 rendered in inverse video. Uh, here I'm demonstrating that the character set, the font can be either in ROM or RAM. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually scrolling every byte in the character set by one bit per frame. And uh, this pattern shows that in some cases you can actually use it to get a plausible scrolling effect. This, uh, these are tests of the 80 column test, uh, text mode. Um, this mode is best suited for a monochrome CRT. Um, most LCD TVs and capture devices actually do a reasonable job with it. Um, it will probably look like crap on your run-of-the-mill CRT television. Now I will uh, turn on the color burst and we can get a glimpse of the 40 by 25 color text mode. Every cell can have a different foreground and background color pair. Again, uh, the font can be in ROM as well as RAM. Um, and actually, uh, getting the 40 by 25 color ROM font mode to work was one of the most difficult parts of this project because on the AVR it takes two cycles to read a byte out of RAM but three cycles to read a byte out of ROM and in fact the timing of this video mode is so critical that I had to write a Python script to generate the assembly code for the horizontal interrupt handler. Now we have a couple 256 color demos this is the obligatory plasma effect. It's being rendered at a resolution of 80 by 50, which is half horizontal and one quarter vertical resolution. You'll probably notice some tearing. Uh, the the V-Sync is not perfect, but also um, since video generation is done entirely in software, the only time available to your program to update its logic and its uh, image buffer is during the horizontal and vertical blanking intervals. So the tearing is because in some cases it can take more than one frame to uh, render the entire screen's worth of the plasma effect. You could probably get better performance by doing some crazy beam racing stuff in assembly language, but this was just a quick demo I threw together. And this is a very janky Mandelbrot set renderer with a color cycling effect. Uh, it's not very optimized. Again, it's using 256 colors, this time at a resolution of 80 by 100. You can use the keys to uh, pan around and to uh, zoom in and out, but as you can see, it is pretty slow. Um, it wouldn't win me any points in the demo scene. Next, we'll do a slideshow of some 256 color images. The amethyst is connected to my computer via USB to serial. 
and I've got a Python script that will take an image, uh, downscale it, convert it to the amethyst color palette, and send it over the serial port right into the amethyst frame buffer. Since the amethyst only has 16K of RAM, 160 by 100 is the highest resolution uh, frame buffer that can be used. And even then, that leaves you with only 384 uh, bytes of usable RAM for your program. But, you know, that's three times more than what you got on the Atari 2600, so maybe it's not that bad. You could display a full 160 by 200 image if you compiled it into Flash, uh, Flash ROM, because that would require 32K. 160 pixels is the maximum color resolution possible because there are 640 pixel clocks of active video per line and there are four pixel clocks per color burst cycle. So that means we have 160 color burst cycles of active video per line and therefore 160 pixels of horizontal color resolution. If you turned off the color burst, that would give you the ability to display uh, 320 or 640 uh, monochrome pixels per line. I don't have any uh, examples of high-res uh, monochrome images at the moment. Uh, maybe I'll show some of those in a future video. And finally, we have Robot Finds Kitten. Uh, Robot Finds Kitten is like a Web 1.0 meme game that has the distinction of being ported to pretty much every platform out there. Uh, naturally, I needed to uh, have a go at it. I don't think it's the first Robot Finds Kitten implementation for the AVR. As far as I'm aware, it is the first uh, standalone version that generates color video and sound and doesn't require a serial connection to a PC running a terminal emulator. Um, in case you are not familiar with this quote-unquote game, you are robot represented by the pound sign or hash sign or octothorpe, whatever you like to call it in your neck of the woods. Your job is to find kitten. This task is complicated by the existence of various things which are not kitten. Robot must touch items to determine if they are kitten or not. Press any key to start. So I am the pound sign in the upper right corner. This is actually the uh, first point in the video that you're hearing sound, uh, something I haven't touched on until now. Um, the, uh, <laughs> um, uh, the amethyst has a single uh, sound channel that can be used to play pulse waves uh, of varying frequency and duty cycle. Um, it's driven basically like the PC speaker on, you know, an old IBM PC. It's driven by one of the AVR's uh, hardware 8-bit PWM channels. So it should also be possible to do some kind of sampled sound. Um, that's not something I've tackled yet. Um, each of the uh, sounds that you hear when I boop one of the items is actually an audio representation of that item's description. The set of NKIs, uh, or non-kitten items, um, is mostly from the standard Robot Finds Kitten distribution. I've added maybe about a hundred or so of my own. Let's see, is this the kitten? Yes, this is the kitten. You found robot. Way to go, kitten. Press any key to return to title screen. So that's it for this first video. Links to the schematics and source code will be in the description once they're online. Stay tuned for future videos where I'll discuss the lower level details of video generation, uh, demonstrate my implementation of the fourth programming language, and use the amethyst as a serial terminal with a Raspberry Pi to get on the internet. And I will leave you with a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.